Hello everyone, welcome back. We are now in the third video on the planning steps within a project. Um, we have covered a few topics so far. We have covered how to enter tasks and their durations, the dependencies between the tasks, adding subtasks, some rolled up options. That was the first uh, planning video. In the second video, we uh, covered adding resources to the task, checking that schedule cycle time without buffers, and also this item six, sorry for the uh, poor uh, PowerPoint, <laughs> item number six. We checked the resource loads and staggering within the project. In this uh, video, we're going to cover adding uh, some focusing milestones and some preparation or what we call full kit points and how to best model some purchasing activities and in, in the last video uh, following this one we'll do some final touches adding the buffers uh, and a few other things so let's uh, focus here on these milestones and adding some full kit points or purchasing activities all right let's move to concerto Okay, I'm back into the Concerto project plan, and um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and close a few of these windows that we had used. The CC analysis, the milestone window, and uh, the resource window. And we're going to talk first about some focusing milestones. There's two types of milestones that we would typically use to help us focus uh, around priority. And the first is what we call a CMS or a contractual milestone. Now, a contractual milestone is used in the project plan to, you know, by its nature, by its name, it's it's typically a type of milestone that's added in a very large project where you may get portion of your funding contractually for the first portion of the project that you complete. Uh, so these large projects, oftentimes we don't wait for funding for delivery for funding. Uh, we get funding, you know, portion of the way through because it's very large and very expensive work. Uh, so hence the name contractual milestones. But in the nature of planning, we're uh, 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 we're using these types of milestones to help focus uh, our capacity and our attention to the part of the product that we're actually executing today. So we may have a large multi-year project where we want to place a contractual milestone maybe at the six month point somewhere where it makes sense. So I can really focus my capacity for the next six months. I know the detail of that work that I need to do. And then as I get closer to the end of that six month period, I'm detailing out the next six months. So I can still see the impact on the overall project end, but I see the impact to a milestone, which is closer in something I can really manage to the same type of, and this, in this simple project plan, I'm going to add a milestone to help us focus our engineering effort. So we really want to drive the project to get to the end of detailed design on time. Right, without delays. We know that if we delay getting to the end of detailed design, then those delays will propagate through the rest of the project and it will be very difficult to recover. So we want to focus our engineering capacity. It also gives engineering something to focus towards as opposed to the end of the project, which they, the most of their uh, role is early on getting through the end of design. So in order to, I want to place a milestone after this design task, a contractual milestone. And to do that, I'm going to use uh, these icons here. So I've just clicked on the number three on the detailed design task. And I'm going to come over here to insert special tasks. And I'm going to select completion milestone. Okay. Um, we've changed the name to completion. It's not contractual in our software. So it's a completion milestone uh, and the due date will be calculated. I can start with the due date of today. That's typically fine. And the due date will be calculated as we run that uh, generate schedule algorithm again in the future. So let me go ahead and submit. What that does is it enters in the contractual milestone at the end of detailed design. So you kind of can see that this becomes a mini project kickoff to basic design a detailed design leads into a milestone. And so, of course, this milestone we placed over here once I run uh, generate schedule. So let's go ahead and 
run uh, generate schedule and what I'll see is the actual projection for that milestone completion milestone is going to be 915 right so it's going to be five days five days and six days or uh, 17 or excuse me 16 days so about three weeks from today uh, or 915 okay so that's that's pretty good so that's my contractual milestone when i now when i insert buffers we will also buffer to this contractual milestone and and it stays when i after i say i accept this plan I, at the end this date will not move unless i move it manually so it's not moving with the product say if we get behind this is not going to move forward the projection will move forward but this is locked in time so we really want to focus to getting here uh, first from an engineering perspective and then <clears throat> the rest of the project will be fine right so that's a contractual milestone or we're going to call it completion milestone <laughs> sorry and uh, there's another type of milestone which is an internal milestone an internal milestone now i'm going to place one here um, at the end of basic design just kind of for oh maybe i'll place it down here so if maybe the test uh the folks that do the testing and the final validation after we build or assemble the the product uh, we want to give them an indication of when that will be coming to them for testing right uh, so i may want to place an internal milestone between build and test to give that projection it's not a milestone that gets locked in place it's it's a milestone that will move with the project but give me some projection as to when this activity will happen in the future okay so i will come here to test i'm going to insert a special task internal milestone is what i want submit and you'll see the internal milestone then enter between test and um, the uh, win between uh, okay test and customer acceptance. So I went in the wrong place. I want to go here to test, insert special tasks, internal milestones, submit. There we got it. Uh, actually, it's entering it at below. So let me go ahead and insert special tasks, submit. So it's entering it below the build. So I did that incorrectly. Sorry about that. So I'll take these two and remove them. Okay. So now we have the internal milestone between build and test. And if we generate schedule again, we'll see the projection of that internal milestone. So after I run generate schedule, I now have the IMS uh, projection projected to be 1016, uh, four days before the end of the project date. So that makes sense. Uh, uh, so these uh, dates will be accepted into the plan at some point. Yeah, I'll replace these milestone due dates with these projected dates. So um, this internal milestone will have a date. The completion milestone will also have a date. This one will be locked in time. This one will not lock the project, meaning the project will float left and right, but uh, it is a target that we can monitor. Okay, so those are two types of focusing milestones. Um, the next thing I'd like to discuss are preparation points and we call these full kit points. So uh, and typically we're going to place a full kit point ahead of a phase of execution that requires a lot of integration from outside entities. So if I have a bunch of procurement activities or manufacturing maybe i'm manufacturing some of the parts in my own organization or outside the organization or with vendors and parts are coming in so tracking all those things that are coming in from outside the project we need to receive them all before we go into assembly or build right so i want to have a focusing um full kit point here that I can start to monitor way before I get to build, right? I want to start monitoring that a few weeks before. I want to identify what all those parts are because we've gone through detailed design. We've identified the parts, they're all in procurement. And now I'm getting ECDs back either from manufacturers or part suppliers. 
And I want to make sure I have all those items back before I start to build. Right? I mean, build is not very long. And even if it, even if it was longer, I still want to have one time where I'm targeting to have all of those pieces back. And we call that full kit or preparation for the build phase. All right? So in order to add that, I come over here. I'm going to insert a special task. It's going to be this time a full kit task. And the full kit task will be in front of build, right? And it will follow procurement and manufacturing. So I'm going to draw that dependency here. Now you can see we have uh, some dependencies that are not needed. I really don't need that dependency from procurement manufacturing to build anymore. So I can take that out if I choose. I can leave it in. It's not doing any harm. But I'll take it out just for clarity here. So now I see after procurement and manufacturing, there's a full kit point, a zero duration full kit point, which is a preparation task. And I place that before build. Now a preparation task, there may be uh, in its uh, checklist, you might have all the items that are needed. Uh, we could add different columns in here for status or work order number or whatever you want. And we could also bring that data in from the procurement system and populate this. So as I get closer, you know, if I'm marching through here and I've ordered all the stuff and everything's on order, I should start managing this full kit point. So getting the visibility around, hey, what are all those items? Uh, and are they tracking to be on time? This full kit point is also, you know, a calculated date, right? So once I run schedule, one more time, I'm going to generate schedule again with that full kit point in place. And you'll see down here for full kit, there's uh, the CC analysis, of course, we're still at 41 days, but the CC analysis is here. Also, we have this full kits purchasing task, and now we see the full kit task here with a need date of 10 9. Basically, what's that saying is that this full kit point. Before we add any buffers to the plan or anything, the full kit point duration or a target is 10.9. So this gives me a date that I can give to the procurement folks, right? We need to put everything on order so that we can get everything back by 10.9. All right, makes sense. There is a feature here around pull in offset. Um, so that is used if you know, assume we have plenty of lead time to get those parts. Pull an offset might say, hey, my suppliers are not very reliable. They're always saying they'll deliver on Mondays, but they don't, don't get stuff to me until Fridays. So there's always a four or five delay. So I could come in here and change this pull in offset uh, to some duration, maybe five days, meaning the date that I give the supplier will be five days ahead of this of this real need date of 10.9. So I might give them a date of, you know, 10.3 or 10.4, whatever that, that work days turns out to be. So they would shoot for that. The real product doesn't need it until a few days after that, but it gives me a little bit of margin uh, in my purchasing uh, activities with vendors and manufacturers. So that's a possibility to use that as well. You just need to be careful because there's an internal date when it's needed and then there's an external target date. So I uh, just need to be aware of those things. Okay, so that is a full kit or a prep, uh, preparation task. The last thing I want to cover, and uh, it just so you, because they're available and I want you to kind of get exposed to what it is, doesn't mean you have to use it, but how do I model something that's much longer in duration and it is not, you know, being really being worked? Like, of course, detailed design is being actively worked by the engineering folks. Procurement and manufacturing is something that, yes, we have to wait that time period, but no one in the organization is really working on anything. I mean, procurement techs are doing a little bit of following up with suppliers, and but they're not working that task the whole time. It's not, they're not, they're not doing the work, right? So this, these, this won't have as many subtasks. Now it could have subtasks with all the items that are needed and the longest item, duration item, in execution will determine how long this needs to be once we've added all those procurement those long lead procurement manufacturing items to this if we wanted to or this just becomes a placeholder right initially um, 
We could use the full kit to prepare. We could put this placeholder in the project, which is a, a guess at our lead time that's required, right? And then uh, when we run schedule, this will place the full kit point where it needs to be. It'll place the contractual milestone where it needs to be. And then once I accept the plan, those dates are locked in. I no longer really need this task, right? Now, if I want to use it during execution, I really want to monitor that lead time that we can do that. But I would suggest that you make it a, what we call a purchasing task. And that comes over here. So we would change this to insert a uh, purchasing task, purchasing, and it's going to uh, change the name slightly. And, um, I'm going to submit this. Uh, I'm sorry. Undo that. Oh, undo. And I want to make, oops, undo one more time. This task I want to change. I'm going to edit task properties. I'm not going to insert this, <laughs> but instead of a task, I'm going to make this a purchasing task. Sorry about that. All right, so the duration is still 15 days long for this task. I'm not changing the duration. I'm going to submit this. And now when I run schedule, I'm going to get a date uh, when this will be completed. All right, so I'm going to run schedule. So now if I look at my full kit and purchasing task window down below, my full kit task is set on 10.9 and my procurement manufacturing, I would think it would be on the same date, but I'm sure it's over a weekend. So there's some fractional stuff going on there, but it's not a, it's not a problem. So our procurement manufacturing task, we really need all this stuff by 10.6, right? So that would be the date that I would, uh, which is the end of this week, right? One to the six. And um, what I would want to do is uh, one through the fifth, actually, a six should bounce six, six, seven, eight. Okay. What I want to do then is manage this task in execution. I would manage it not to remaining duration, but it would be managed to a date. Okay. So you can think of a long purchasing or procurement activity that may be 30, 40, 50 days on larger projects. Um, I don't want to manage it. You know, if I go to update it tomorrow, what do I do? Change it from 40 days to 39 days. So that seems a little bit, uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. But if I'm managing that to, okay, the due date is uh, the 6th of October, for this task in an execution, if that doesn't change, then I can just say, hey, we're good, nothing's changed. Or if the EDD from the supplier is moved out or moved to the left, then we can change that date, which might make this task a little smaller or larger, right? So that's kind of how you might manage these long duration tasks that really are either placeholders or their procurement type uh, activities. Uh, again, I would prefer that we, uh, we are, we really don't have to manage this in execution because we can manage things through a full kit or a preparation and we can lock this contractual milestone in to focus on detailed design. And once this plan is locked in, uh, we don't really need this procurement and manufacturing task anymore. So I hope that makes sense. There might be some questions that uh, that arise uh, from that. Okay, so what we've covered in this video is the adding uh, focusing milestones, so CMSs, internal milestones or IMSs, um, or completion milestones and internal milestones. We've also covered the addition of uh, full kit or preparation activities and how we might model some very long uh, tasks that are more kind of like fixed duration tasks and there's not uh, a lot of uncertainty around them, but we wanna manage them to some date rather than remaining duration. Okay, so uh, in the next video, what I will cover is just some final touches on the plan. We're gonna actually take our 
plan right now that does not have buffers in it and insert buffers we're going to check for some things uh, that our cycle time is okay and then we'll talk about task managers and how do we accept the project and prepare it for execution all right great thanks